comments yeah is someone trying to ask me something yes i'm asking what is the project your voice is really really low sweetie could you be louder i'm asking what is the project i will send it to you by uh, today inshallah i'm still working on uh, deciding the project for you so it should be from one of the topics we covered so far so i'll ask you to submit uh, any research or any video or presentation i'll give you a topic and you need to work on it okay uh, so the one who submitted for the breast cancer they don't need to do the project right no everybody needs to do this project it is for each one of you okay but for the ones who submitted already the breast cancer project i will be including those marks as what i was telling you all right okay so we were doing chapter 4 which is the chemicals of life we started discussing about this and let's quickly uh, recap the contents we covered in the uh, first uh, in the last week uh, i don't think we covered much we were just uh, discussing about the introduction for this topic right Okay, so we are on page number forty and forty-one from your textbook. If you have the textbooks open in front of you, uh, let's start with the verse from the Quran, which is re related to this topic about expansion of the universe, in which uh, Allah uh, states in the Quran in chapter fifty-one, verse forty-seven, and it is we who have constructed the heaven with might, and verily it is we who are steadily expanding it. Okay, so according to this verse, we understand that the universe is constantly expanding, and this was the information revealed in the Quran about many centuries ago, when there was, uh, when the science was very primitive, and also uh, the people were uneducated, leave alone about science, they were not even educated. Okay, and today the scientists, of course, found out that the universe is indeed expanding. Okay, so each and everything related to science uh, about the universe, about the cells, about the uh, growth of the fetus in the mother's womb, each and everything has already been mentioned in the Quran, Subhan Allah, which was revealed many many centuries ago. Okay, which which uh, clearly proves that Quran is the book of Allah. Uh, so we need to reflect on the verses and we need to uh, follow everything which is written in the Quran, Insha Allah. All right. The objectives for this topic are to study about water and its importance, and to explain the properties and functions of carbohydrates, lipids, and proteins, which are the biological molecules, and also to study the structure of DNA. All right. Uh, so under the KWL, uh, let me ask you a few questions. So, what are the biological molecules which we are going to study under this topic? What are they? Miss, can I answer? Go ahead, Speedy. Carbohydrates, proteins, and lipids. Very good. Carbohydrates, proteins, and lipids are the biological molecules. So, what are uh, these made up of? Or, if I'm asking you, what is the human body made up of? What will what will be your answer? It is mainly made of water, but it has also molecules. Yeah. So it is mostly made up of water. We can say 70% of the human body, or be it the body of the animals or plants, it is made up of water. And also the biological molecules, of course, like the carbohydrates, proteins, and fats, which are on the other hand made up of carbon and hydrogen and various other atoms. Okay. So the bodies of all living things are made up of many different kinds of chemicals. Uh, most of our bodies are made up of water and we also contain carbohydrates proteins and fats so these substances are what our cells are made up of and each of them is vital for life okay so we study about this on and on in your biology uh, we know that the basic unit of life is cells and cells they are made up of proteins okay and also in our body there is there are carbohydrates which are again broken down for energy in our body and also of course fats cause the fat is present under our skin uh, the adipose tissue and all the fatty tissue which we have the calories which we need to burn we say when we are going to the gym all that is nothing but the fat present in our body in the form of adipose tissue isn't it so we can say our body is basically made up of these biological molecules carbohydrates fats and proteins and also water okay so in this chapter we will look at each of these kinds of substances one by one 
and uh, it will help you to have a basic understanding of the meanings of the terms atoms, elements and molecules. Now, who's going to tell me what is an atom? You must have read in your chemistry already. So can you please tell me what is an atom? And we are in our grade, uh, grade nine now. What is an atom? Ask from us. Why it's really? Uh, it's the smallest unit of uh, of matter, and it cannot be further divi uh, divided. Very good, excellent. The smallest indivisible unit of matter is the atom. So atom is the smallest unit. Why? Because it cannot be divided further. And the atoms, they come together to form various molecules and compounds in our body. So according to chemistry, if you're talking about the smallest, uh, according to chemistry, it says everything is made up of matter. And the smallest unit of matter is atom. Okay, so uh, we are studying uh, in the biology both from the chemistry point of view because that is also science about how the various uh, biological molecules are made up of various elements and atoms and molecules. So this is what we are going to study in this topic. So let's start with water. We know the importance of water already because in most organisms almost 80% of the body is made up of water. Okay, so the various liquids which are running in your body like the blood, the lymph, all of them, they constitute of water. Okay, and each and everything, uh, also, it has also been stated in the Quran that each and every cell, it is made up of water or made from water. Okay, so we have seen the cytoplasm is a solution of many different substances in water and the spaces between our cells are also filled with a watery liquid fluid which is known as the lymph uh, which you will be studying in your lymphatic system further when we are talking about the body systems. And inside every living organism chemical reactions are going on all the time. These reactions are called metabolism. Okay, uh, for example, when I'm sitting and talking to you right now, there are many reactions going on in my body, right? So there is circulation which is going on and on, respiration, there is digestion which is going on when I'm eating something and uh, the, my brain is giving signals for my nervous system to work. Okay, so these set of functions which are going on in a human being on an organism, uh, uh, either Either when I'm at work or when I'm sleeping, these functions are going on and on and on, isn't it? So these set of the functions which take place in your body together is known as metabolism. Okay. Uh, I will again uh, 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 teach you from the presentation as well the clear definition of metabolism. Now metabolic reactions can only take place if the chemicals which are reacting are dissolved in water. So even for this metabolism to take place, for various chemical reactions to take place in our body, water is vital. They cannot take place without water. So water is an important solvent as well. This is one reason why water is so important to living organisms. If their cells dry out, the reaction stop and the organism dies. So what might happen if we are if we don't drink water? Can we survive without drinking water? No. No, what happens if we don't drink water? Maybe for a day or two. Eventually, what might happen? Yes, girls. So the water in our body it starts drying out. Uh, you can uh, observe our. Uh, you can uh, imagine to a little extent during Ramadan when we are fasting. So by the end of the day, when it is uh, the longer days, I'm talking about the summer days when the Ramadan used to be uh, in summer. So uh, we will be uh, by the end of the day when it was uh, when it's reaching the iftar time. So you feel so, so thirsty that your tongue is drying out and your lips are drying out. So imagine what might happen if you're not uh, drinking enough water for two days or uh, then 
the, your body will get dehydrated your body cells are devoid of water they they start getting dried out your skin uh, skin starts getting dried out leave alone about the physical things which happen in the body which is everything gets dried out and you get dehydrated and even the cells get dehydrated and when there is no enough water the chemical reaction they stop taking place okay so ultimately the organism will die so water is very very important for various functions which take place in the body water is also needed for other reasons for example plasma the liquid part of the blood it contains a lot of water so that substances like glucose they can dissolve in it so even the blood it is composed of we know it is composed of rbc wbc and the blood plasma so this blood plasma it is entirely made up of water it is the fluid the transparent fluid which is made up of mostly water so these dissolved substances are transported around the body and water is also needed to dissolve enzymes and nutrients in the alimentary canal so the digestion can take place and we also need water to help us get rid of waste products okay this we will talk about how the kidneys will remove the waste products urea from the body under your excretory system so the urea is dissolved in water forming urine so basically this proves that water is very very important for each and every metabolic reaction taking place in the body uh, also for water is present as a component in the blood and water it is very much required for all the living things not only for humans for animals for plants for all the living things all right so let's uh, talk about uh, the uh, topic from the presentation so on the slide you can see over here you can see the uh, structure of the various carbohydrates over here right so biological molecules are often called organic molecules since many of them were discovered in living organisms so another name for these biological molecules carbohydrates fats and proteins is organic molecules why the name organic because they are found in the organisms the various living organisms contain these Uh, organic molecules so chemists they have found out that organic molecules all contain carbon and hydrogen atoms often along with the other elements so if you are breaking down the carbohydrates or proteins or fats they are mainly made up of the uh, elements carbon and hydrogen you can see the various structure of the carbohydrates in this picture if you're taking the structure of the glucose molecule which is a carbohydrate what is the chemical formula of glucose molecule girls mhm mm c6h12o6 right so this that means it consists of six carbon atoms and 12 uh, hydrogen atoms and again six oxygen atoms which come together to form a glucose molecule similarly the various structures of the carbohydrate molecules are shown in this picture here this is starch and this is glycogen and this is glucose all of them which contain the same elements which are bonded together which are mostly carbon hydrogen and also oxygen so carbon atoms they bond strongly to other carbon atoms so organic molecules can be large and show a wide variety of chain and ring structures which many carbon atoms are bonded with many carbon atoms bonded together so you can see the structure of the various uh, the organic molecules they look like this they can either be uh, branched or chained or in the form of a long chain or ring structure like the glucose molecule so this is how you see the structure of the various uh, organic molecules now moving on to the next slide organisms they need uh, organic molecules what are the functions of these organic molecules in our body Uh, which of these organic molecules provide our body with energy can you please tell me uh carbohydrates carbohydrates very good and what is the function of proteins in our body muscles what is it really could you repeat muscle muscle okay uh, do you mean the building of the muscle which is body building yes Yes, very good. That is one of the functions, and for cells, I think. For the making of the cells, you mean? Yes. Yes, very good. And 
what else are the uh, apart from these what are the functions of proteins in the body what happens if we don't take enough protein in our diet especially for the growing children like you the growth will be retarded okay and also for adults protein is required we need it throughout our life for repair and maintenance of the body which you just mentioned now that we need it for body building we need it for the formation which is uh, the uh, making of the new cells and the breaking down of the old cells all this is done because of the proteins in our body okay so the main function of protein in our body is it is uh, they provide the raw materials for the growth repair and maintenance in the body okay so till the growing stage of 18 to 20 years you need protein after that the entire uh, life span you need protein you always need to include protein in your diet because it is very very important for the body building for the growth uh, for the repair and for the uh, maintenance of the various tissues and cells in the body okay uh, similarly what is the function of lipids it's, uh, it's helpful for uh, storing energy very good even fats provide our body with energy in fact it is the excess energy which is provided which we store in our body in the form of glycogen and also the fat layer it provides a a, a layer beneath our skin which uh, which you can say also helps in a type of body building because most of the uh, fat which is present in your body in the form of adipose tissue all that is made up of fat okay so these are the functions of carbohydrates lipids and proteins in our body the carbohydrates they provide energy to drive the life processes the proteins they provide raw materials for the growth and repair of the tissues and the nutrition supplies uh, living organisms with the molecules that they need of course we get all these from the foods which we eat so these these are the four main groups of organic chemicals used by the living things or we can also call them organic molecules or biological molecules so these are the various names given to these uh, groups of chemicals which are carbohydrates lipids proteins and nucleic acids which have specific functions in our body okay so of course we get it from the foods we eat what all can you see on this picture here carbohydrate yeah so these are the various sources of carbohydrates which we get from our food so you can see the various cereals the bread which is made up of uh, wheat you can see the maize here you can see rice you can see this pasta pasta is made up of which cereal spaghetti um. pasta wheat yes very good so the the pasta and spaghetti it is made up of wheat again you can see the oats you can see the barley and you can see this uh, potatoes why the sweet potatoes and the potatoes are given here because they contain starch which is a carbohydrate again so basically you get the carbohydrates from these sources especially from your staple food uh, either you are eating wheat as your staple food or rice as your staple food or oats or millets or maize so all these they give you enough carbohydrates in your or uh, diet so you need to take enough carbohydrates in the diet mostly you take a maximum amount of carbohydrate for example if you are eating rice with chicken so the quantity of rice is more so the quantity of carbohydrates which you need to include in your diet should be more compared to the proteins and also the fats now let's look at the lipids so from where do we get lipids in our diet Mhm. Mm the various cooking oils we use. Yeah. Like the corn oil, the sunflower oil, the groundnut oil, olive oil which you use for cooking and also for salad dressings and uh the sesame oil and you can also also you get a little amount of fats from the uh, whenever you cooking the fatty tissue in the meat in the fish okay so all these are the uh, sources of the lipids or fats from your diet okay so butter all these they give you enough fat in your diet and you need to include these things so that you get enough uh, fats from your food you eat okay and after that uh, these are the sources of proteins okay so you see on this picture there is fish meat chicken cheese milk eggs nuts 
all these are the sources of proteins okay especially the red meat and the beef it is known as the uh, the beef and the lamb meat it is known as a red meat uh, it is also good but it is uh, but rich in saturated fatty acids so after a certain age like about 35 to 40 so you need to reduce the consumption of the red meat cause it might lead in the uh, increase the cholesterol level but you growing children can have it uh, so basically white meat is more healthier like the chicken and the fish it is very good for your health compared to the red meat and also the cheese the milk the eggs the various types of uh, dry fruits the nuts all of these are very rich sources of proteins okay so these are the sources of carbohydrates fats and proteins from your diet which you need to include in your diet okay so biological molecules are useful chemicals that are needed by living organisms for metabolism okay as we discussed from the textbook now metabolism is a set of the reactions which take place in your body and these biological molecules the carbohydrates the fats the proteins the nucleic acids they are very very important for the metabolism to take place so how do you define metabolism is the sum of all the chemical reactions in living organisms is called metabolism uh, the sum of the chemical reaction which take place as you can see in this picture during respiration during glycolysis during digestion uh, you can see the intracellular circulation oxygenation all these are the metabolic the chemical reactions which come together uh, and the name given to them is known as metabolism so these reactions include the release of energy in respiration the protein synthesis and also the growth and repair of the cells Uh, the green plants they make the complex chemical compounds that they need from simple raw materials what do you what do you mean by simple raw materials can you please explain what is simple raw materials <clears throat> girls i'm waiting for your answer uh like carbon dioxide and water very good the plants they are autotrophs meaning producers they photosynthesize their food right their own food and how do they photosynthesize by using the simple products in the uh, environment like they take in carbon dioxide and they use energy from the sunlight water and mineral ions from the soil so they use these simple products in order to make their own food which is glucose and during this process oxygen is released okay so the carbon dioxide are the raw materials for the photosynthesis to take place uh, the simple sugars produced in photosynthesis are used to make a wide range of other compounds okay so we know that these glucose molecules on the other hand they are used to make a wide range of compounds how is it cause the plants of course they make glucose as their own food and the herbivores which are the plant eating animals even we us so we all eat the plants yeah so meaning we are eating the glucose which is present in the plants even the herbivorous animals and the carnivores the meat eating animals they eat the herbivores that means this is how the glucose it is reaching from the plants to the herbivores from the herbivores to the carnivores so this uh, uh, it is again uh, uh, this is how the food cycle it works isn't it the food web we a uh, humans we can be either vegetarian or non vegetarian we depend on the uh, other animals and plants and also the animals they feed they prey on the herbivorous animals and the herbivores they eat the plants so the plants they need minerals to make some of these complex compounds so uh, the plants they make their food by using these minerals from the soil water and the carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and animals they eat the plants or other animals that feed on the plants so biological molecules that animals require are present in their diet so whatever you are eating uh, you get proteins the carbohydrates and the fats from the diet which you are eating and of course the other animals also they get their nutrition from whatever they are eating of course so the different biological molecules needed for uh, for a balanced diet in humans are carbohydrates proteins fats vitamins minerals fiber and water can you tell me what is fiber ladies have you heard of the term fiber yes miss i think they're present in bread very good and <clears throat> bread meaning the white bread 
You think uh, the fiber is present in the white bread? I'm not sure, ma. No, sweetie, it is present in the brown bread or the or you can see the whole green bread. Okay, so fiber it is basically present in mostly the husk, the husk, you know, the outer covering of the wheat and the rice, and also the skin of the fruits and vegetables. So this fiber is very very important, as important as the biological molecules in your diet. Why? Because it it is the fiber which moves the food in your intestines, and it is the fiber which allows you to pass the waste materials outside your body smoothly. Okay, so without the presence of fiber in your diet, when the waste is getting removed from your body, it becomes very very hard for you to pass the uh, the feces from your intestines uh, to reach it to the rectum and pass it through the anus. The fiber is uh, is what which makes your feces or the fecal matter very soft, uh, so that uh, and smooth so that you can pass. readily from that okay so that is mainly present uh, in the whole bread and unprocessed wheat and rice you know the brown rice which contains the outer covering which is not polished and also the whole bread the brown bread and the whole grain bread all of them they can they are very rich in fiber and also the fiber is present in the skin of the fruits and vegetables so what you can see in this picture is a healthy plate according to world health organization you need to include the following in your diet which says a healthy plate meaning it is a balanced diet and this is how you need to include the various uh, biological molecules in the food you eat okay so according to a healthy eating plate a quarter of it should include the whole grains the whole grains meaning uh, you can take it in the form of rice but brown rice or, or also in the form of wheat or maize or any cereal or carbohydrate food which you want to include okay so quarter of your plate should be that and the other quarter should be protein however you want to include the protein in your plate in the form of chicken meat or a fish or eggs or milk or nuts any which ways you can get the protein but you need to include a quarter of your plate should be protein then the next half if you see the three fourths of the next half should be vegetables and one fourth more or less than one fourth should be the fruits so it is very very important for you to include the fresh vegetables and fruits also in your healthy plate because uh, not only they are a very good source of vitamins and minerals they also provide you with fiber and also enough water okay so this is how your healthy plate should be plus a glass of water and a glass of milk okay so milk again why because it is a very rich source of protein and also calcium which is a mineral which is very very important for your body okay so healthy plates so are you eating like this girls are you eating a balanced diet how many of you include all this in your diet uh maybe in each meal or at least once per day do you have all these things at least once a day in a meal yes yes of course you must be having yes so you must include uh, of course you will be uh, you must be having a lot of uh, protein in your diet you eat a lot uh, either in the form of chicken or egg or uh, meat or any type of meat or fish then of course you eat a lot of carbohydrates as well i'm sure because you must be eating rice or wheat or hops or bread all that so the problem is with the fruits and vegetables most of you will not eat a lot of fruits and vegetables but you should include lots and lots of fruits and vegetables in your diet also you should include lots of water and milk is also very important you can either take calcium in the form of any milk product you like in the form of milk or cheese or yogurt or leaven Okay so this is how you need to eat a balanced diet so that you include each and every uh, nutrient in your body okay uh, are you aware that if you're not including enough of these uh, nutrients or you can say the biological molecules in your body you will also get deficiency diseases for these uh if you're not taking enough carbohydrates in your body you will be energy deficit you will not have enough energy you will feel very weak and lethargic 
And if you have a protein deficiency, especially in the uh, countries where, which are very poor countries like Africa and all, wherein the children, they do not get enough food to eat, uh, they will get diseases like Washiorker and Marasmus, which are the protein deficiency diseases in which the growth of the babies is not proper. It, it's not, uh, they, they get the pot bellies, they have the big, big bellies, and the rest of the body is so starved that you see they are very, very lean. Okay, uh, so this normally happens in the countries where there is famine and uh, there is not enough food uh, for the uh, children to eat. So these are the protein deficiency diseases. So this is how the babies look like, which are uh, the babies which are under, uh, you can say, malnutrition and they're not growing properly. So this is how they look like. They have big pot bellies and the rest of the body is so thin. So uh, we cannot watch at this pictures at all. It's very heartbreaking. So these are the various protein deficiency diseases. Okay. And then coming to the other uh, deficiency diseases, there are many, many diseases if you have a various mineral and vitamin deficiencies also in your body. For example, if you have a calcium deficiency, you will get diseases like osteoporosis and uh, uh, your bones are really, really weak and uh, osteomalacia. And if you have an iron deficiency, of course, you will be anemic. Most of the girls these days I'm watching are anemic. They don't eat enough iron in their diets and they don't eat properly. And they're so lean and they're so weak and lethargic. You can see the pale color on their face because they are anemic. Oh, OK, so these are the few examples of the vitamin and mineral deficiency diseases and the deficiency of carbohydrates and proteins, uh, which on the other hand show you how important is to include all these foods in the diet and how important it is for you to have a balanced meal. OK, ladies, so I'm sure you must be including uh, uh, eating healthy. But from now on, eat healthy and also discuss about the importance of these with your family members so that uh, maybe your younger siblings or your parents. So do not include a lot of junk in your food or carbonated drinks like Pepsi and Cola and all that are not at all good for our health. OK, so instead include lots and lots of uh, water, fresh fruits and vegetables and homemade food is the best. Uh, again, including all these things which I just mentioned. All right. Okay, so coming to the carbohydrates, the carbohydrates, as we just now saw in the picture, they are found in a wide array of both healthy and healthy foods like bread, popcorn, potatoes, cookies, spaghetti, soft drinks, corn and cherry pie. Why did they include soft drinks under carbohydrate rich foods over here? Because mm -hmm. they give energy. Really? The soft drinks, they give you energy? Some like energy drinks. Okay, so that is all. That is a, uh, a scam. The, the no uh, energy drink gives you energy at all. They just uh, show you the advertise saying the Red Bull and this and that. No, they included the soft drinks over here. Why? Because they are carbonated drinks. You know the they contain carbon dioxide. That is why they are so fizzy when you open the cap. That, that it is the carbon dioxide gas which is coming out. Okay, and that is very bad for your health if you are having a, a more of your consuming a lot of carbonated drinks once a while if you want to have it is okay but then again i want you to have uh, the colorless uh, carbonated drinks like the seven up or the uh, sprite cause this the pepsi and the cola which are black in color they are very very bad cause uh, you must have seen obviously many videos which are circulating on the social media as to how bad a pepsi or cola can be they can actually be used as an acid in order to clean the toilets okay so what imagine what might happen if you're drinking uh, the, the pepsi and cola and what might happen to your intestines especially for the young children who, who consume all that so it can be really really bad so uh, once a while have sprite or uh, uh, what do you call a seven up and all it's okay but i ask you to avoid it i don't bring it at all at my home i don't bring it uh, soft drinks at all it's a big uh, no no at my place so you should include uh, instead a lot of uh, healthy foods yeah, have fresh uh, fruit juices or uh, uh, also have a lot of uh, you know uh, squashes or milkshakes instead which are very good all right uh, so we know bread
Corn, of course, it is the corn, potatoes, cookies, uh, every, uh, any baked thing, it is rich in carbohydrate. Why? Because it is made up of refined flour, uh, be it cookies or cakes or pizza, you know, the crust of the pizza, spaghetti, all these are made up of carbohydrates, wheat. Then they also come in a variety of forms and the most common and abundant forms are sugars, fibers and starches. Because carbohydrates, we get it from potatoes and from plant products, they are very rich in sugars and fiber and also starches. Okay, so this is how the basic structure of a carbohydrate molecule looks like. This is, as I told you, it is a six carbon sugar and this is how the structure of a glucose molecule looks like. It contains six carbon uh, bonded to 12 hydrogen and again six oxygen and you have this ring-like structure in one corner. So you can uh, draw the structure like this, like this or a simple structure like this. All right, ladies, so uh, the time is up. We shall discuss the rest of the topic in our next lesson, inshallah. Any questions so far? Any doubts? No, miss, thank you. Is it clear? Yes. Yeah. work today and inshallah today I shall send you the content for the midterm on the groups inshallah all right okay you have a great day ahead take care Bye -bye.